I didn't know anything about asthma until I married my wife. Her and her siblings, you know, it's five of them. And then my children, to see my wife, to see our twins have an asthma attack and, and, and you know, be grasping for air, something that if you don't have asthma, you take, take it for granted. You just draw breath in, you don't even think about it. That's scary, it was terrifying. And to think that many, 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 many children have this issue because of what we're allowing in our air. And you think, wow, what can be done about that? Everyone has heard about the climate crisis, and certainly uh, St. Louis is no stranger to global warming, and we, this is the heartland. We are very, very closely tied to fossil fuels, and coal in particular. Burning fossil fuels, as everyone knows, creates an awful lot of greenhouse gas emissions and also contributes to poor air quality. We have bad air because of the coal fire plants, high asthma rates, and a lot of times, there was this, this belief that environmental issues were left to basically upper middle class whites. But ironically, as myself and other uh, churches are learning, these environmental issues affect everyone. In my 12 years here, I don't think I have ever heard anyone say the environment is not important, I don't care about climate. That is not the issue. People do care, but they care about other things even more. And so the really important thing is to identify what are those things that carry the most importance to see if we can do both. So solar energy, for example, if you can address some of the clean energy at the source, then you're going to have some uh, spillover effects down the road to that child not having acute asthma incidences. My predecessor had a huge imprint in this community, huge responsibilities, huge commitments. And so I just stepped into those things running trying to serve as best I could. And part of that expansion on that service was into the spaces of sustainability and environmental justice. As they were considering me for pastor, I presented, I said, hey, look, the trend is there's gonna be less members in churches inhabiting these beautiful places. How do you sustain it to where it's still gonna be there for the community? Well, my thought was decrease expenses. And so I proposed, hey, we would get solar panels. So after we got the solar panels, we saved $3,000 a year, period. So it, it's, it's advantageous. And as the word get out, then other churches won it. And my thought has been, why can't New Northside be an example, be a model for other African-American churches, other churches of color, of lifting up environmental justice, green theology, sustainability. And so as I learned more, I wanted to do more. Really, the heart and soul, what has made the sustainability program, all of it, including the climate program, successful, is the willingness of the people within the community to be a part of the solution. We're not nearly where we want to go, but as we have laid a very strong foundation the city is without a doubt a leader in the Midwest sometimes a leader in the country in what it's doing well, you know the the idea that st. Louis and then even African-American churches would be part of cutting edge the, the new era I wouldn't expect that. I don't think a lot of people in St. Louis would expect that. But St. Louis is a great place because there's an ongoing battle for it to be better. You know, and so 
it's a place where where there's change here, it can affect the whole country.